and welcome to another episode on Full Bar. In today's episode, we are going to work on creating our Dynamo DB table and start coding an application that will store things and retrieve things from Dynamo. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> So this is the third episode on my Dynamo series. In the first episode, we learned the basic concepts of Dynamo. In the second episode, we model the data that we want to store and retrieve from the database for this uh, mock application. So if you have not watched the previous episode, I recommend you that you go and check them out. There is a link in the description box for the episodes and for the full playlist. Also, I leave you the playlist in the card up here so you can go and click on it after you finish watching the video. So now that you know what we are building and how we model the data, in this video is going to be very practical. We are going to jump right onto the code and we are going to start working on our application. In this first part of the application, we are going to work directly on the table and we are going to create a table and the storing and retrieving things from the table. In the next video, we are going to work on the indexes and that's what we are going to do and that's the whole series. So now let's go to the code and get started with it. So we are starting this coding part. In this part, we are going to create our table and we are going to create the functions that are talking to the table. It's a very simple part. And in the second part, we are going to work on the indexes. So let's get started with a project. This project doesn't have much on it. It's just basically a simple SAM application that I will have on API here. No functions, I remove them all because we will start adding them. And it has already a Dynamo table that it has the uh, primary key that is the property ID. And then the sort key is called sort key because here we will have in some cases the string property and in other cases we will have the start booking name. So I just call it sort key. So this is how our table looks. And if you don't know how to create tables on Dynamo and you want to get started, I can link you a video where I explain in details how you create this and how you do the operations on Dynamo. Then I created in the fire BMB. I have the handler, it's empty. It just have these uh, calls to these two uh, modules, the Dynamo manager and the property manager. The Dynamo manager is empty. It just have a call to Dynamo client and to a uh, environmental variable called table name that will get the table name later on. And the property manager is an empty file. In Dynamo Manager, we are going to do all the operations that are calling Dynamo, like save, get, query, whatever. And in the Property Manager, we are doing a little bit of cleanup to store or to show the data that is coming out from Dynamo or that is going into Dynamo. The first thing we want to do is to add a property. For that, I have added a function now here called add a new property. This function has the policy to do crude operations on this table and is passing the environmental variable here. It also is uh, using that API that we have defined here and it's on the path property, a simple post. I also have created now a new uh, method in my handler called add property that will get the body that is passed in the HTTP request and that will have the property details and it will be saved into uh, Dynamo. But before we are going to create the property record to save with the right um, names for our fields. So if we go to the property record to save in the property manage, we can see that we have the, the property ID just to make sure that everything is named correctly. The sort key is property. And then we are going to create this variable that is the composite key that we are going to project later in our indexes that will happen in the next video. And that is the country and the city together. So it's very, very simple. 
and then we are just passing forward this property table. And then we are storing this using the save item from the Dynamo Manager that I also create here that is simply doing a put in the Dynamo table of an item. And that's it. What this is returning is just printing out the result of the save item. And I also have created a super simple kind of integration test in Postman that will save a new property. So here you can see the URL and I have the body, the property, the owner ID, the city, the country and the title and the description. So you here you can see that I don't talk about sort ID, I don't talk about country city. This is just the information from the property I want to store and I present and I get back whatever was stored in the table. In this case, we will see the property ID. Here is the primary key. We will see the sort key that is the text property and we will see this kind of uh, composed key that we will be using later on. Now that we have added a property, I want to get a property and it's the same. I create a function that has passing the uh, variable of the table name and I create an endpoint and I give permissions and then I go to my handler and I create the method get property that gets from the query string the property ID in this case the primary key but we can change that one to property ID for example if we want and this will use the uh, get item that simply will go to Dynamo and get an item and we will get exactly one item because we are looking for property ID and sort key and that returns only one item. The sort key is the property word because we are getting a property and then when we get a property we will get all this gibberish like the sort key, we will get the country city so we need to do a cleanup of that property. So in the property manager I created this uh, clean that property that basically uh, returns the fields that I want to show to my clients and that's kind of it. I also created in Postman an example for you. It's similar on the same property. I have the URL with the query string parameters property ID that that's the property I have added and then I just get back the property. Very simple. Now we want to start working in the table by adding a booking for a property. So again, I create a new function and I give the name book property and I give permissions to it and I pass the table name as a variable. I create the endpoint and then again in the handler, you can see that this is, we have done so much homework that now this becomes very simple. And then we want to book a property, so we are going to get uh, a lot of information from the square string parameters. We are getting the user ID, we are getting the property ID, we are getting the booking date and the end of the booking date. And then we are going to use the property manager to create a booking record to save. So then the client doesn't need to understand our internal logic. So here we can see create booking records to save that basically we are passing the booking date as a property ID that stays the same and then the sort key we are doing the start booking date because we need to have that sort key. So basically we are adding that to whatever is being sent uh, in the query string parameters. And then we are doing again the save item in the table in using the Dynamo uh, Manager that is saving whatever we pass into the table. Again, you deploy this and I have created a Postman example. You have the URL here and then all the different things that we are going to pass in our query uh, parameters and we send this and it's writing there. And the last thing we want to do in this video is to get all the book dates for a property. So again, we are creating a new function, we are giving it a name, we are creating a handler, we are giving permissions, and we are creating an API. You see, there is a lot of repetition here. And then in the handler, we will create the new method that is basically this one, get book dates for property. We are passing the property ID in the query strings and then we are querying the table 
for that property ID. We are querying the table because we don't have the sort key, so we cannot return one item. We are going to query the table and we are going to get everything that has that property ID as primary key. So I have created a new method in my Dynamo Manager called query table. And this is something I have never shown you before, so I will look a little bit more into details. Basically, this method looks exactly the same as the other methods. It has uh, the property ID in this case and we are going to pass the table and then we are uh, telling that we want the property id to be the same as whatever we are passing here and we are just doing this expression attribute values to to match that but basically all this together does the property id needs to be the same as this one here and this will return a list of items so here you can see a list of items and those items, we are basically returning them uh, in the results. But before returning them, I want to clean in them up because when we have bookings, you remember we have the sort key, word there, we might have the startup booking date twice because we have it in the sort key and then we have it as an attribute. So in the property manager, I will call the clean up booking results that basically will iterate on the other results and remove that sort key uh, for me. I have some here, some, <laughs> some testing data that I forgot to remove. And again, after you deploy this, I have an example in Postman that I can show you and I just get back this uh, property. This will return a list with the, with the different properties, but you can see that it's not returning the one that is the property because if we will not have this um, thing here it will just return everything that is a property as well and then if i open uh, dynamo i can see that i have in my table this is what it looks i have two records the two i added the property id with all the property information and then you can see that we have the booking here that they have sort key both of them but then the attributes they don't share any of the attributes so this is how it will look when you start filling it longer and longer the code is available in github it will be the final version in github so you can go and check it out there and in the next video we will see how to do the indexes but you can see there is a lot of repetition we have done the hard work so this is just basically very very simple that was the video for today, I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up, subscribe to know how to retrieve things from the index and how we are going to work with the indexes. Also, uh, it's important to know that the code is available in GitHub so you can go and check it out and explore it and try it for yourself and even improve it because I um, not, might not have the right answer for everything. And Remember that every use case is different. So what I'm doing here is one way of solving this problem. There can be others. I, for doing this example, I did two examples. One, everything in one table using transactions. And uh, this one that doesn't do any transaction, everything is using indexes. And I'm using, I, you will see that I will be using free indexes. Well, we modeled that data already, so you know. So there are different ways that you can solve the problems using different uh, concepts from Dynamo. And there is no real, uh, there is good answers, but there is uh, use cases and you need to make sure that you know what you're doing for your particular use cases and things that you want to do. So around here, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So if you want to continue watching, go ahead and click on them. And if not, I'll see you next week with the last episode on this series, Working with Indexes. Bye bye.